What's up, what's up, what's up, party people? It's your girl, it's Anu here. Here for Just Keep Jamming, episode number 24. I am here with my Patreon Zoom people. What's up, Patreon Zoom people? The same amazing, beautiful, shining faces that I have every week. I love you guys. And I have a very special guest this week. My boy, my homie, my co Uh, creator of the song that holds the title of this very podcast, the song Just Keep Jamming, my boy Ariki Foster. Ariki, can I get a whoop whoop? Yo! What's up? What's up? What's up, everybody? What's up? So happy to have you here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ariki, we are looking at you on Zoom. You are in your studio right now with a beautiful candle lit in the back with acoustic guitars uh, mm. perfectly placed in the background. And you're mm. from the island of Kauai right now. Tell us tell us where you are. Tell us about where you're at right now. Uh, right now in the studio, which is your studio in my studio. Yeah. yeah. And um, the studio is located um, in Lihue. It's actually not far from the airport so in between the airport and um the marriott so kind of central yeah if you know Kauai, you you, you know exactly yeah. where that is right right in town so you could we could pop over and yeah do fly a song home. on Kauai and fly fly right back home um yeah. i want like i do with all my guests just to kind of break the ice and get this rolling like would you mind mm. taking about a couple minutes and just tell us a little bit about yourself yeah absolutely <laughs> Well, my name is Ariki, short for Nga Ariki, but the tour to me, Kiawaiki Foster. Um, I'm originally from New Zealand, born and raised in New Zealand, um, Cook Island, Maori, Tahitian. Uh, blooded. Blooded. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. And um, I moved here in 2005. Actually, I was playing music in New Zealand too. Um, I went to audio engineering school, stuff like that. Mm. music composition and all that um played with a lot of guys that you guys not know now probably not like who being being around guys like fat freddy's drop guys i was around yes. a lot of those guys um i had a friend that knew some of the black seeds guys i didn't know black them personally seeds. um trinity roots was an old yeah. band that i used to look up to and um those guys were awesome um yeah so i played a lot of music back in new zealand i was into all of that I'm originally a bass player. I didn't, and then when I moved here to Kauai in 2005, I basically like bullshitted to this band, which is I'm in the band right now. I told them that I'm a <laughs> drummer, but I wasn't a drummer at all as a bass player. And they were looking for a drummer. And I said to them, oh, I'm a drummer. You guys need a drummer? And they're like, yeah, yes. Yeah. So I started practicing my ass off to be a drummer. And long story short, I got good enough to be the drummer for this band. And I'm still drumming for this band. And it's Greenstone Project. You Greenstone you know Project. Yeah. Yes. They're such yeah, an amazing yeah, yeah, yeah. band. You guys rock. You guys are yeah. at every big festival that we have on Kauai. Right, and right. And you guys are you guys like are you guys a, a cover band? Would you consider yourself? You guys have original. Yeah, yeah. Music? We're yeah, we're like a cover uh, top 40 cover band. So much um, fun. Yeah, we do a lot of like corporate events conventions and stuff like that when when yeah uh kika kika does our stuff so we get all those oh, corporate kika events just hit me yeah. up yesterday oh. hey. so where are we playing nah i um, know right <laughs> we gotta play together <laughs> right so yeah just did that and then um been doing music all my life my family and musical traditional music as well uh moved there 2005 started a life family here. yeah started a family got married had two beautiful children mm-hmm. and they're musical too now they're like 13 and 14 oh wait now nah, they're turning 14 15 this year and they're super musical what um, kind of instruments do they play i think they're trying to do all of it like my daughter plays guitar bass um she produces beats and stuff on the laptops my son plays drums mainly drums and whatever he feels like doing but yeah yeah she's like super in tune with it like she'll tell me i joke around with my friend i'm like i do something i will like oh man this sounds so good and she comes in and she's like this like little 13 year old and she looks nah dad that's not it i'm like yeah. who are you you know and, you know i mean you go girl yeah you tell I'm like look <laughs> go over there and 
make me a sandwich. Nah. <laughs> but yeah, she tells me straight up if it's whack or not. Cute. <laughs> they know. I feel like they but, do yeah. know, right? These they do. Kids, yeah. They are the yeah. new generation. Even my little eight-year-old, he tells me that kind of stuff sometimes. Right. Like, that's not funny, mom. Like, because he knows what's funny because of like TikTok or something. Right. He's like up and up with all that stuff. Also, yeah. dad life. So, um. Yeah. Yeah. So you you're no longer married, right? Nope. Um, haven't been married. I think we split like eight, nine years ago. Okay. I think, we're, yeah. We're bringing that up just to keep it real with the whole flow. Oh, and this is what we do. I yeah. just keep jamming. We like to be <clears throat> vulnerable oh, and talk about that. Uh, anything that we possibly want to just to help people never, ever feel like they're alone in this. Life, Absolutely. You know? Yeah. And that's how it was. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It probably was so hard. We don't have to get too deep into that, but I do want to just touch on okay. what it was like growing up in Aotearoa. Like, w- w- did you were you middle class, upper class? <clears throat> what did your parents do? Man, I was like lower class. <laughs> lower class. <laughs> yeah, the struggles. It was struggles. <clears throat> but when we moved into the suburbs and stuff, and we're trying to do like you know get better education and stuff, it was tough. Because we would go back and forth to um, the Cook Islands because my mom's family is in the Cook Islands and stuff. And we'll go back and forth there. And that was nice because it's similar to Hawaii. It's like super tropical, you know. And then we come here. We, we come back to New Zealand. We try to move in the suburbs close to the city. Try to get better education and all of that. Or even try to strive to be better at sports. Because I feel like Pacific Islanders, they're all like sports, you know, like where I was from was rugby, rugby league, like full contact, kind of like football type of stuff, uh, NFL stuff or whatever. It's like, you got to be like a special breed to really succeed in that area. But yeah, it was all of that in the, in the Cook Islands. It was like, like, um, life was music on the weekends, traditional on Sundays. And throughout the week, it was just working in the plantations plantations um, what yeah. kind of plantation pineapple papaya all that stuff like um wow total or you know the total patches and stuff when yeah. we were kids that's what we had to do i'm pretty sure you know and that's how some of the families would make money is we'll do all the stuff and sell it to i think the hotels back in the day and the hotels were like super small so you know it was like they i guess they could use smaller families and stuff like that to um produce their projects yeah to get what they needed oh cool. yeah yeah so it was that but then we myself and my cousins when we'd be like weeding in these places like the the, the pineapple fields and stuff we'll be weeding but then we'll be singing or we'll beatboxing or making just making noises mm-hmm. yeah and like just trying to make songs and stuff and we didn't even know how songs were made at the time we just loved sounds and music and all that and, and it, it was always with us it was always with me till today like music was always there and amongst my, all my girl cousins because they all used to sing and stuff and all of that but um yeah that was there and then when we moved when i moved back to new zealand because those back and forth was new zealand the cook islands new zealand cook islands back and forth mm-hmm. and to see family from both sides and my brother i think he went to tahiti and it was yeah all of that but um then when i go back to new zealand that's when i try to pursue this music thing at the time, I didn't even know what it was. I thought it was learning a guitar, learning how to play guitar. And as soon as I got learned how to play guitar, I was like, okay, cool. I made it. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm musical. And then, you know, you hear songs on the radio and, and you're like, man, me, especially me. I'm the type of person that's like, I'm always asking questions. I ask myself questions, people, I mean, a higher being or whatever. And I'm always like constantly looking for these answers and stuff and trying to figure out things because man going to my divorce and everything i had all the all the questions like that i wanted to ask about everything the existence what's my what's the point of me being purpose, here what a, yeah. yeah you know life's what's purpose, purpose? Mm-hmm. crazy yeah and um yeah but yeah that's how how it was back in new zealand it was at the end of the day everything was all music related like there's the struggles and stuff, the, the the highs and the lows with friends and family back there, which I do miss. And if they're checking this out, yeah. But shout yeah, out. yeah, shout out to all you guys. 
I sent everybody an Instagram uh, message too, so you better jump on this. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it, so it seems to be, well, it seems like, well, I just know this from listening to the bands that you spoke of and yeah. other bands like 1814 and um, right, right. Uh, even Catch a Fire, like mm-hmm. so, uh, some of it's lighthearted and fun, yeah. um, the House of Shem, but some of it is a yeah. lot about like oppression, like about, you know, just yeah. the struggle and how our culture is dying or, you know, their culture is dying. Yep. Hawaii we're we we have been through a very similar right you know history but i think a lot of critics do talk about us hawaii musicians we don't sing about the struggle enough like that was something that yeah. actually i talked about on a podcast that i was a guest on uh, it's like hawaii right. doesn't acknowledge like you know us bands like maoli or fiji or you know yeah, yeah, yeah. we're, we're kind of keeping it lighthearted, but but in aotearoa they go for it they talk about yeah, like this do. is this is it and it might not be attractive necessarily to like the mainstream pop sound but it's the truth right. it's their truth exactly and they don't important. care if it's like popping off or anything it's like they're just expressing yeah like what about the children the- yeah, there's a song I, what about the children right house and shem that's popping in my head right now right um I love yeah. it though. Oh, I'm trying to get crazy. back to Aotearoa. And right. if I do, you should come too. You I come. yes, I <laughs> yes, I do. I, when was the was last think- time you were home? Um or that home. I think it was when my, my mom passed. <gasps> I think it was when my mom passed away. Yeah. So that was that was kind of my um I feel like that was my my downfall phase. Like, yeah. Let's get into it. Let's get All into right. it. We're talking about <clears throat> so, mental health. So that triggered a downward spiral. Your yeah, mother passing away. Th- How many years ago? I think it was 2014. Wait, 13, 14. Man, I, I can't remember. But but it was around there. Um, it was it was a sudden death too. It was like she passed away on my sister, my baby sister's birthday. Oh. It was cr- it was wild. Like it messed me up and her because. She was actually going to um, to my sister's school <clears throat> to set up her classroom to surprise her, like set up her classroom to um, surprise her for her birthday when she come up. But she went up there, set up the classroom and stuff, and had a stroke. And um, my sister was still at home. They weren't ready and stuff, and then they found out, you know, she fell over and had a stroke. And then she died, I think, later that day. <laughs> Oh, she was not yeah. expect like it was not expected. It's yeah, not like it she was, was bedridden or anything. Yeah, she okay. yeah she walked to the school in the Cook Islands because everything's close. So, <clears throat> I found out. Quick. Yeah, I found out because I was here. Um, I found out and I was just like, oh man, because I was close to my mom too. I was close with my mom. My mom drove me crazy, but I love that woman. <clears throat> hey, <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> ditto. Not just kidding. I love you. <laughs> But yeah, so um, <clears throat> yeah. Once that happened, I was like, I don't know what it was like. Even when I talked to you know my ex-wife, we're still good friends now. So you know, thank God for that. Yeah. At the end, you know. Yeah. But when she passed, I man, I just couldn't, I, I couldn't operate. I was like zombied out. Didn't even know what to do. I was like washing dishes, looking out in the distance. It was just crazy. And then that's how I think eventually me not being there. In the marriage, it was tough. And my ex-wife, she was helping me out and stuff like that, too, to try and get all the stuff. But it was just me. I just didn't know what to do. <laughs> are yeah. you the oldest or middle? What are no, you? No, I'm, the- I'm the middle. Yeah. Around the and middle. Were there, was there any siblings in Cook Islands? I mean, other than your sister? Just my sister. It was just, just my sister. sister. Yeah. And then a bunch of my cousins. But yeah, my mm-hmm. brother, those guys, they were all in New Zealand and stuff. But yeah. So eventually fell off. And then. A couple years after that, we got divorced because, I don't know, I just let it. So what I tell my friends now is, like, if you can save it, just save it. Like marriage, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Save if your you marriage. Can, save, yeah, if you can save it, save it. But but if it's toxic and, it, you know, it, don't be ashamed to leave it. Right. Not, not, like, in a dick way. It's, like, it's healthy. If you're in something and it's just tough and you're just constantly banging this stuff like that, it's not worth it dude like mentally it's not worth it dude one life to live yeah cut it and be like hey let's be friends i know we're gonna hate each other but 
let's just be, eventually be friends because in the end it'll yeah. be okay. And that's eventually how me and my ex wife are. And we're cool now. We talk we have shit, kids but together. Yeah. No, that's you're, <laughs> you're reminding me a lot of me and my baby daddy's situation. Right. Like we, we broke up, um, like when my son was three and it right, was right, right. very, very tumultuous, very tumultuous. Like any, like, it was impossible to even see anybody else because he was very like, yeah jealous and would get um sabotage he would try to sabotage any like relationship that i would be exploring by like saying like you're a bad mom or try to like say that i can't yeah. you know n- he can't watch my kid while i'm trying to go on a date or something you know like just like right. you know, spiteful <laughs> shit like that like it ugh. is it is man it's like, yeah oh my god <laughs> but then eventually i don't know how i feel like that's one of the biggest accomplishments in my life like is yes. getting that relationship <laughs> good yeah. for my kids and or for my kid you know yeah. yeah and now we're we're great friends and yeah we talk shit too we have our bad days sometimes oh yeah um, <laughs> i love that we can relate on that level and yeah, i think that so awesome. my mom's in here right now and her and my dad like same thing they're they're yeah. like best buddies and i think that that was a great example although my parents have been divorced since i was eight i didn't have like the the image of a mom and a dad and a little happy perfect family like how right you know some people's families are I at least got to see parents that that are getting along, like no matter right. what um, the world like dealt them and they're no longer together. At least they can get along. Like we all still have Christmas together. We go on vacations together. Like yeah. my mom and my mom and my dad's girlfriend are like friends. My mom goes over there and cuts his hair. Like you, right. you that's better than, than a, than a shitty marriage for exactly. 40 years or something. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And that's, that's what it is. It's like, it, it gets to a point where it's like, you start thinking about what other people think or it's like who gives a fuck it's like oh yeah you don't should not worry about what like people's opinions on your relationship or or you oh left God. this guy you guys divorce oh you guys are such shitty people it's not even mm-hmm. about that it's like and that's and that's the other thing i've developed after all of this stuff and everything even pandemic because in the pandemic my dad passed away last year no yeah it was crazy. No. Like, it's like I got out of this whole thing with my mom, my marriage, going through the whole struggles of that. And then I was like, okay, you know what? This year, I'm going to be good. 2020 is going to be the year. And then pandemic hits. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, shit. Go through that. And then, but I brought myself and my dad together, stronger. But then 2020, early 2020, he passed. I was like, what? Was he living on Kauai with you? No, he was in New Zealand and, he was in New Zealand. and quarantine was tough because no one yeah. could visit anyone. Yeah. So he basically died alone. <gasps> <laughs> I just got chills. That's so sad. <laughs> yeah. And then my brother called me up, all this stuff. And I was like, man, what did I do? <laughs> you know, like, You're like, God, what did I do? Yeah. yeah like, like I had all, like I said, I had all the questions like, what did I do? I know I had a shitty childhood here and there, but pretty sure I try to do okay but yeah it had me questioning a lot but then that's when mm-hmm. i just reminded myself hey it's it's all good um it is what it is realistically what am i gonna do about it like am i gonna sit and cry about this which i did for a good while mm-hmm. or am i gonna you know get up and do something like strive and then it was this music and then not long after that i i reconnected with you Mm-hmm. That's why I was like, holy shit. And then you told me the whole, you know, what you were thinking and feeling. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. Like, me too, girl. Me too, girl. <laughs> yeah. No, but just so many little details about uh when I was what I had been going through. Yeah. And then the lyrics that I ended up writing to just keep jamming. Um, mm-hmm. like you kept telling me like that's that's spot on even what you just said like you know you cried a bit like yeah we we all agree in this room we talk about it all the time like please cry like crying is so good like don't hold it in let it cry but don't Mm -hmm. let it consume you um don't don't look down i I say in the song i say (sighs) to keep that chin up even when it falls even if a tear is coming let it flow just don't look down and i just mean like don't let it stop you from continuing to move forward yeah exactly diana and um I don't know. So I don't want to, I don't want to skip too far ahead, but so okay. how did, how did we originally meet though? Like, how did we even become each other's lives? Please tell me if you remember, cause I kind of forget. <laughs> I know that, um, I know I played with you. I think the first time, first couple of times or something was coconut marketplace. I don't know if we linked up then or I, I played bass for you. I have. Yeah. 
uh, what's the famous band in Kauai that every uh, revival. revival? Yeah, yeah. So maybe it was through that. Like I through... needed a band, and yeah, and they it was introduced me, Ko'o. me to you. Yeah, I think I think that's how I think Kana. Kana, who lives yeah. on Maui now. Yeah, and he's doing really well. That's awesome. Yeah. So stuck from. Yeah, I think it was Kana. That's yeah. That's where I first met you. I think I first played with you there. I played bass for you. Yeah. And then we. And then I remember a couple of like. A, was it a New Year's? I think we were there on New Year's one. Yes, year. New Year's. We at were taking hotel. shots. At, we were? Um, at the height. Yeah. I well, had just given birth to my baby. I was. <laughs> no, I had just given birth, but I probably was too. Hell yeah. I wasn't pregnant anymore. I was like, back shot, let's go. But yeah, I remember I brought my one month old baby and my boyfriend at the time, his dad, and then also my yeah. his brother and their little baby who was like eight months old to Kauai. Oh. And I remember meeting up with you in like the library or it was like a, like a room. Stevenson's library, yes. Stevenson's library. Hyatt, Grand Hyatt, <laughs> yes. But I don't know I was, if uh, I played. Was I playing or was I with you or that night or was i just there to support you i'm not sure i think you just came to support because i think we played with did, did we play with you at the sheraton i don't know all the hotels but i think you yeah guys i think we did or something. we backed you yeah that it was me and um greenstone guys john yeah <gasps> that's right oh my god sorry guys we're like working it out in our heads this is yeah. we're talking eight years ago so that must have oh, been damn. the last time that we saw each other in person. that was the last time yeah and um, mm-hmm. but before that, when we as you were can see, just... I still look the same. Nah, I you don't. do. You look Age. great. <laughs> like fifty eight, which is still young. <laughs> You're not fifty eight. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that before that, when I when we just were you know friends and and maybe played together a couple times, you told me that you had a beat or something, or you invited me to your studio, and, yes. and then that's when you shared with me this beat, and I was like, this is so sick. So I ended up writing a song to this beat. That's right. And it and turned into High on Love. That was yes. a song that was on my Butterflies album, my live album, but it was like an extra bonus track. And I performed it live a little bit. I have a live version where it's like mm. me and a percussionist. It's definitely not amazing. It's like recorded on an iPhone. Like it's not a, a sick live version. I've always like wanted to have a version Damn. eventually. Like I got to try get those stems from you someday because I feel like yeah. that song is such I a remember banger. You asked even, me for the stems. And I, even if we redo them, like even if we have to recreate them, if yep. you don't have them anymore, I don't even know. But shit, yeah, that song's I, a banger. <laughs> that song's have, a banger, dude. I have. Oh yeah, we we got to figure this out because I have some new tracks that I made for you. Oh, oh my yeah. god, it's crazy. I want the new stuff. He showed me some new stuff too. So that's that's basically how we work. I think that's he and I's yep. relationship. He sends me beats. I'm like sick, and then I go and write a right. super sick song to it. So that's pretty much what happened. I think I might've been a little transparent on social media about what I was going through with my mental health. Maybe I went away and I shared that or I don't know what, but it caused you to reach out to me and it caused me to like, actually listen. Like I was like, Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Like I haven't talked to you in years. Like let's fucking work together. And he sent me his beat and I, I have footage of me fresh out of rehab at the four seasons in Kona. It was right before Jordan was about to leave for baseball. So I was Mm. about to be alone. Like I had just right. gained yeah. the strength to like be strong and like, who I'm out of here. I'm sober now for the first time since I was pregnant, you know, and I'm like dealing with this new mental health issues and, and I have this cool beat and I'm trying to write to it, but knowing that I'm about to be left all by myself. So I was like very fragile basically. And, and then I, I have the footage of me like messing around with that. Just keep jumping. Looking out the road Just keep jumping Just keep jumping And like trying to hum it out to the beat um, But yeah, the beat that you created was so easy to write to i mean it's right. so comp it's so complex in the sense of like it has so many right. chord changes it's not just <laughs> yeah. like three chords like how i'm used to writing so it was yeah. definitely a challenge but um how did you yeah. create that beat tell me a little bit more about Man. the just keep jamming song beat well it was right after talking to you i created it right after talking to you oh yeah yeah I think that's and how it was you you had people come in though right a girl hit me up she said oh Cat. yeah yeah, she's like, I played. Oh man, I love Kat. Kat is she plays stuff. keys, right? She plays keys. She's a Berkeley student. She's a oh, school yeah. of music. Yeah, love so she's those. amazing. <sighs> and she plays for our band too, uh, for Greenstone. Um, oh, got it. 
yeah, she's the new keyboard player because we used to have Bart, this other guy. But Kat even told me, she's like, oh my God, the part where she says, what? Um, your chin. Uh, Keep the um, chin up. Or whatever. Chin up. Yeah, yeah, all that even stuff. When it falls. Yeah, even when it falls. Because she was going through, um, I, I, mom passed away too. Oh, so yeah. she was going through it and the song meant yeah. something to her too. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so, 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 yeah, I did all the music and stuff. And then when we go to gigs, I usually like jump in her car, my car. And I'm like, hey, Kat, listen to this. And I play it and she's like, oh my God, that's so cool. And I'm like, but I'm going to take my my keys off and then you put your keys on. And she's like, fuck yeah, let's go. So that's how it goes all the time. She's so cool, man. I love that girl. She's very awesome. cool. I love so I loved knowing, learning that, like that, that, that was another, there was another person on it. Yeah. Um, is that the only other person that you used or did yeah, you get all the it's, other? It's, it's usually just her. Like I usually play the drums, everything else and the ideas and stuff. And if I put keys on, I'll put like some, you know, guide keys and stuff, and then I'll fly to her and then I'll tell her to butter it up and then I'll take my stuff off. Mm, yeah. Because you just want the real pros or yeah, whatever. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure yours were fine. But yeah, no, that's that's fun. <laughs> and I love to collaborate. I mean, it's always fun to collab. Oh, absolutely. Um, so then that's that's what how he sent me the song. I messed around mm-hmm. with it. I wrote the lyrics. I, I changed the melody like a little bit here and there. Like we worked on that song back and forth, like working on it, working yep. on it for effing months like and I was anxious because it's been over a year since I released a song for like the radio or anything so I was like very anxious but I just couldn't quite I wasn't fully re- like ready yet like I yeah. needed to tweak it my we- my lyrics like I, I just wanted to make it perfect and then I kept recording I was recording like on my home because it was pandemic like I didn't right. really and I don't have my I didn't have my manager anymore so right. it wasn't really easy for me to just go and find a studio and plus my anxiety was like out of control I couldn't like just go and like call up a random studio and be like hey can I come in and track some vocals so I was like determined to do it myself and then we talked about me going to Kauai as well but yeah because we yeah we were even gonna try and do that like me and Louie was gonna be like let's just fly her in house her and just stay in this place for like a week or whatever and do what we gotta do which we're still open to doing we I want to I want to do that and do a gig (laughs) like that's my whole thing I want to get it paid for by us doing a gig yep. together and then yep. we can pay for the whole freaking everything but um Absolutely. But, but like but yeah then we I mean all these people this is the 24th episode of just keep jamming i named just keep jamming the podcast because i yeah. knew i was writing this song called just keep jamming which i wanted to be the theme song but so all i had was like a little snippet of your beat you know <laughs> and i i use that as like the opening theme i'm like ariki i'm gonna have this song done i promise it's coming it's coming and so eventually <laughs> you know we finally finished it and then a long time after that it felt like a long time um yeah we finally did the music video for it oh and that was man like, Another thing we that like wanted so badly thing. to get oh. into the same place, right? We wanted to be in it together, but it just wasn't working out. Like our schedules weren't working out. Yeah. So we ended yeah. up using using Josh, who was very good. And then Ariki yeah. got his own people on, on Kauai to film it. And we yeah. had the concept of the the, the 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 camera like flying across the water from Kona to Kauai. Yeah, cool. yeah so cool. I like kind of made it make sense because it's like what wait now we're in the mountains but it was so cool yeah. that, like, that you were in the mountains <laughs> right because we're talking you talk about it you're gonna make it to the Mount of Tuck. right exactly shout out to Lou Dog who, who's a good friend of mine he's like let's just shoot it up cook it I'm like oh Beautiful. I mean let's try to keep it consistent with the beach and stuff he's like no nah, let's shoot it so I'm like, all right, let's, you know what, that let's just do it. Great. I yeah. loved it. And I loved what you were wearing too. It was like mountain man-esque. It was cold. <laughs> <laughs> it was You're cold. In the <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but no, that was cool. And then, and then, you know, we all, we, all of us have our, had our like insecurities about it. I'm like, Oh, can you like fix that part? I like, I don't like my ass in the shot. Josh, can you make it? And then Ariki didn't like any of his close ups. I'm like, yeah, what are you like, talking man, about? You look great. I look, I look so ugly. Can you like, like, do a, like a far away shot or something because man <laughs> I was like, Anu, nope. yeah and i was like no it's good you look, you look handsome fine, like, and you i'm look like great. i'm like looking at the text i'm like looking at lou dog i'm like she said i'm handsome and he's like well let's go <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right, uh, it is what the it ladies is. Ladies are gonna love it. The ladies are gonna love it. You don't love it, the ladies. Will. No, but that was perfect. Damn, and then, that's funny. and then Josh actually just um, he's the shit. He's so fast. He made that thing in like two days, right. and he wants to do another video again. So maybe that's when he comes cool. when he comes back from uh, Arizona, he's coming back in like a couple of weeks. I'm like, oh, maybe we can move quickly Ooh. and figure out a yeah. song and we can work with him again. But yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm down. 
no, just send me that beat again. Cause <laughs> you sent me that beat and it was so good, but it had all the people on top of it. And maybe, yeah. I don't know if you sent me a version without anybody on top of it. And maybe, no, I, can, I think like, it was, um, with it. yeah, there was, there was, yeah, there was a couple guys on there. Oh, it's me and it was Lou. you and Lou. Yeah. And I just usually like just track it, just record it. Am I cutting out? Yeah. What's happening? <laughs> Pretty sure I paid my my internet, internet bill. <laughs> so just try again. No, I'm totally fine. So you're okay. cutting it. And usually you just track it just to get yeah. the idea down. I just yeah. track it just to get the idea. Um, I have this set up to make the music. And then I go over there sometimes on this mic right here and then mm. track the vocals and stuff. But yeah, that's what that was. That's what that song was. But I feel like you cool. would murder that song. And I you feel like everybody in idea. here would what? hear the song and it'll like mess your shit up. That's what I feel <laughs> the song would do in a nice, awesome way. I got to listen to it again. I, I kind of forget, yeah. but all I remember, I went for a walk and I listened to it like 20 times during my walk and it was yeah. like sunset time. It was like vibey and cool. And I, right. and the name of it that you named it. Cause that's usually what producers do. They'll name their beat, like a yeah. name. So I that's when I, galactic, like a, something galactic, galactic something. love. Yes. It was galactic was like, love. So right. weird. So like inevitably though, I think that even if I completely don't use a single lyric of your song that you That's originally fine. put, but it probably will end up having something to do with like galactic or stars Damn. because it's in my head already because of that. That's the vibe. And that's the vibe oh, you created man. with it originally. So that would right. be cool. Um, oh yeah, no I one's heard honored. it. No one's heard it. Nope. No one's heard it yet. So, but you guys are gonna, you guys are gonna, um, you guys are gonna love it. His style, like if you if you know High on Love, and if you right. know how Just Keep Jamming is, and then if you you can kind of get an idea of what this next song is, it's like it's just really cool, really different, like different right. from what Hawaii's coming out with right now. And I'm so grateful that I have I have him because you know yeah. he doesn't work with a lot of people. I'm like oh. I'm special. I'm so I'm so honored. And you are I special. Wanna- Thank you. Yeah. For <laughs> Thank it you. All, so. You're special. Awesome. <laughs> um, so we talked about, you know, with, we talked a little bit about your struggles during the pandemic about, mm-hmm. you know, losing dad, losing, oh my God, losing dad and mom. People in this room right now have actually lost their parents during the pandemic as well. Right. Um, wow. Yeah. Like it's been a rough, it's been a rough couple of years. Um, mm. Christina, feel free to ch- chime in if there's any question or any comment that you wanted to make about, about that. We even yeah. A, yeah, go ahead, girl. I'm so, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm like, yeah, oh. when you told me that you're like, when I heard that your dad died, I was so sorry. Um, I lost my mom a little over six months ago and okay. she had end stage dementia, but it, the, her dementia got so much worse during the pandemic. I feel, I mean, it, it was just, I'm still. Yeah. Recovering. Right. Like I, I still like, I can't this, I live in her house. And wow. I yep. can't like touch her stuff. I can't rearrange. I can't like re- just redecorate her bedrooms as it is. I'd like to convert it to a guest room, but I can't like, mm-hmm. I can't touch it. Like it, it's just, it's very overwhelming to me. Yeah. So, and I'm going through major health. Like as soon as she passed my health collapsed, like I, I was just telling one of my friends last night that, that I have a black cloud over me. I have this new thing with a leg. I I actually fell in my bedroom last night and a tooth got knocked out today. So what? I, I love yeah, it's a cap. But yeah, I it's like I literally have a black cloud over me. And I'm telling you, it's no. been all during this time. Like I can't, it's like I'm grieving mom still, but now I've got this all this crap. We talked about this though. I want to hear Ariki's perspective because that's how yeah. you were saying that you you felt that way. Um, like it was yeah. like, what did I do, God? But like, yeah, yeah exactly. Is, what, what I we, really related to him when he said that. So yeah, what like what we talked about this last week. I just want to acknowledge this though. When we talked about with Ralph Milani, how is it a higher power, God saying, give up? Just you're you're not heading in the right direction. Stop it. Just, these are signs I'm giving you to stop what you're doing and whatever. Like I'm gonna give you all this loss and pain right now because I, I because I I want you to stop what you're doing. Or is it God giving you 
these challenges because he wants to make you tougher for he's preparing you for something even better. He wants you to keep opening these doors and keep trying and keep trying until the door finally opens, you know? So that's like, what is your perspective um, Ariki, on, on that? And I think, it's bo- I think it's both of them. Cause I feel like everything that I've gone through so far leading up to this point has been a wild <clears throat> roller coaster ride. To the point, like, um, moving out of my house, like, all of the stuff, not getting as much work and all of that, and stuff just going down. <clears throat> I ask questions, all this stuff, all that. But then with Louis, that's why Louis like, my good boy. That guy's been there. <clears throat> he helped me move, like, like, into the studio. When I had to get out of my house, I moved my shit into the studio, into the recording studio. And I slept here and everything, and 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 I was telling him, man, I don't know what to do. This is crazy. I, I still have to get my kids. And he's like, brah, no worries, brah. It's it's gonna be okay. You always like push through. You always do what you gotta do and stuff. And I never used to take notice of that until just recently because I got downstairs of this building. I'm turning downstairs into a studio, another studio. And that was just from looking at it as a learning and building type of thing because I was mad. I was super mad. And I think if I let myself go, which I almost did, I would have committed suicide. Like Mm -hmm. it was getting to that point. And that's all part of, you know, the mental health and stuff and how much you allow it to consume you. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, you know what? Nah. I'm here for a reason, you know, that stuff. You tell yourself, no, nah, I'm here for something. I'm supposed to do something. Mm-hmm. And I just looked at it as music. Like, I'm so passionate about music and music moves me. Like, music can hype me up, make me cry. All of that stuff. I'm, like, super sensitive to music. It's not always about the cool banging beat song and the harder song or whatever. Like, I love meaningful slow ballads. Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know it could be anything i sit there and if the song moves me i'll just sit there and and just go over and play it and be like man you know what man this is what i gotta do i got i just need to keep making music this is the thing that's actually saved my life saved your life so you're making another studio like you're expanding like instead of submitting with your tail between your legs and realizing you kind of give up this whole thing you took you went the opposite way you're like oh hell no like shoe string hanging on a string like mm-hmm. like just like i'm just gonna give this up i'm gonna go belly up i'm just gonna keep doing this till i go belly up and i was like no man no nah, just just run it just keep going run it and then, yeah just keep going just, just keep, keep running. Running. <laughs> i swear to god christina that's what you gotta do girl yeah. don't stop like just keep moving forward like it's it's wild how life hands it's you these true. things yep I'm I'm also going through a one two punch right now, like boom, boom, like, and you know, I I, I reflect back on like my 2019 because right now I'm doing a lot of um posting on my Instagram where yep. I'm reliving my past because I feel like you got to know where you're in order to know where you're going, you have to you know, know where you came from, and that that was my mentality in this yep. new year. I really wanted to reflect before before I forget. So me going through this exercise like by posting has helping me to remember all the cool shit that I've done because right now it feels like I am a failure or it feels like I'm not doing amazing things. And I needed to like remind myself that. So I just wanted to, um, to acknowledge in 2019, I was like female vocalist of the year. I was the Island music awards, female vocalist. I I had just gotten engaged in Ireland and like I was living in a nice big house and like my life was great. I was like 10 pounds skinnier and like, just I had money in my bank, like all this cool shit. And I thought I was on top of the world. And then fast forward one year later, and I'm, you know, forty thousand dollars in debt because of rehab. I my relationship is not amazing. We had just gotten married and everything went downhill. I had just lost a baby. I lost my mm. jobs. You know, yeah. I, have, I had no accolades in, to my name anymore. Like I was no longer the the cool new shit anymore like it's just interesting how life can change so quickly yeah and can flip on you and this can happen with anybody 
anybody, anybody. So as long as we yep. remember that this happens, we can stay ahead of that, of that curve and like prepare ourselves for failures, ups and downs. It's going to be, it's going to be okay. No matter what, if you're up or down, I feel like having that medium balance and what can help us keep there is, is, um, self-care, keeping, yeah. keeping ourselves centered, <clears throat> um, having a great foundation, a solid foundation with like friends or family or exercise or meditation yeah. and just, you know, that mental health, making sure that you remember right. that you're never alone, that this is happening to everyone all the time. So never, ever feel like you got to give up. Cause that's those, that would be the worst thing ever you could do. Yes. Absolutely. Sharon. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. She she gave Sharon gave me a book. Oh. And um, um yeah, some good stuff in here. No, that's true though. Like like understanding and acknowledging it too, like for what it is helps you move. Can I read forward. this quote real quick? Because it was I just opened the page. I don't know why I went to this quote. Life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forward. Damn. By Soren Kirkin God. Wow, <laughs> Kirkin God. <laughs> Kirkin God crazy. with two A's. God. <laughs> uh, yeah. The 2020 hindsight, you know, vision. Yep. We always know what what a coulda shoulda, but you have to go through it, right? You never mm-hmm. can just skip a skip a step. So Christina, like you're yeah. you're feeling all the feels right now. You're going to feel them. You have to feel them. If you don't, yeah. then the life is going to make you feel them one way or another somehow. Ooh. It's all you part well of your feel journey. Them now. Yeah. Well, you have yeah. us too. Kirk and God. Honestly, you guys, Anuhe, I mean, what you have here, it, it, it just, it came right at the right time. Honestly, what you did. I think for all of us. Yeah. I mean, we have this, it, we're like this Ohana that we have is just, it, it's been, it's what gets me through the week. You wow. guys, and you guys have been with me when I was at my very weakest. And that's the least that I can do for you in exchange. Like, please, like, always know that you have, I have your back too. Like, I'll try the best I can. And then at least, there, and there's people out there listening to this podcast that are not in this Zoom room right now that are also receiving this camaraderie. Like they hear your voices. They know your names too. Like, I feel like we're on our own little like talk show, like every week. And there's people who are, you know, are not on Patreon with us, but they too feel the connection with us. Connection is just such a beautiful thing. And everybody that comes on this show, Ariki, like is just so vulnerable and open and they share their perspective and we gain a little something from every single person. And then we take it with us to the next episode. That's why I always like to refer back to on what we learned because otherwise it'd be for nothing. Yeah. And that's cool too, because man, it's <clears throat> just being real with yourself and real, real about everything. You know, we can, we can, we can butter it up. We can whatever we want, but at the end of the day, it's like, you're going to be the one questioning it yourself. Like we just, like I said before, we just got to acknowledge it, figure out ways we can move on and dealing with it and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. also having the support, support is key. Support is key. And some people don't know where to get that support. Yeah. So that's like where I'm trying to like, cause I'm an introvert, believe it or not. And I'm too prideful too. sometimes to ask people for help. And, you know, mm-hmm. so, so, this is one way is, you know, by connecting in this Patreon zoom rooms, of course, and Aloha thyself, we get a little more extra special time and presence in your mailbox, but, but also just, um, self-care, I think learning yeah. what that is and, and taking it upon yourself to, to take care of yourself. It's yes. almost like you take care of everyone takes care of other people, but then they don't take care of themselves first. Like I remember hearing that you, for the very first time, it's now it's such public knowledge, but I remember hearing right. that, that, that concept for the first time, like you have to put your face mask on first before you can help others. You have to fill your cup first so that you can overflow your cup into others. Like, like yeah. I didn't, I, I was, there was so many years of my life that I was not doing that. And I was realizing that I was depleting 
other people around me because I was desperately trying to get something. And I'm like, ah, I just can't even, yeah. I, I don't know what I'm, what I need, but just got to focus on yourself. So I'm going to ask you a question. Aiki, Cause I mean, I talked about, we don't have a lot of guys on here talking about mental health and being mm-hmm. open and vulnerable and brave about their feelings. But I'm so thankful that you are. What yeah. do you, what does a man do? What does a man like you do for mental health maintenance or for self-care? You know, like what have you learned that can help you and maybe that others can try? Do you take like time to go to the beach? Do you just totally submerge yourself into your music and that's that's your self-care? That's kind of my thing. I think for me it's just understanding what's important to me right now which is my children, you know, and maintaining my mental and explaining it to the kids too. Like I'm always transparent with my kids. Mm. So, so that saves them from trying to figure out what the fuck is wrong with my dad. You know, Ooh, I like that. Yeah. That's, that's this new generation of parents right now. I think because our, right. my parents weren't like that necessarily. Right. Were yeah. any of you guys as parents, like, I'm going to start talking about my feelings, kids. This is what daddy's right. going through right now. Like, no, dad would be my like, dad, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my dad's like, go get me a beer in the fridge. That's what I was going to say. My dad didn't drink beer, but he definitely smoked weed. Right. <laughs> he would just lock himself in his room and smoke weed. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that's, that's one thing I do for sure. Like the kids, like I stay super transparent with the kids. And me knowing that, that they know what I'm thinking or trying to explain and stuff. I try, I hide nothing from the kids. I even cuss up a storm and stuff, but it's not cussing at them. No. I swear a lot in front of my, my kids. I never used to, but after going through whatever, I'm just. They're older now. Yeah, they're old. And I'm just being me. Like. Yay. Yeah. And they know that I'm not like doing it to, it, it just comes out of my mouth, but they get what I'm trying to do. They get what I'm trying to say. So my thing is like, yeah, just staying transparent with my kids because at the end of the day, they're the next generation. When I'm gone, I don't want to leave them like just wandering and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I got to give them as much information, love. 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 But also insight onto like maybe mistakes that you've made. And, oh, I learned this from my dad. Like it's like he's teaching you how to fish for your family for a lifetime, but he's teaching you maybe what not to do. Don't you know, do this, do this instead. That's, that's valuable mental health information for your kids. I I, I did that to my son last night. I was like, babe, I said, don't mess with me. I'm like, not tonight. I'm like, mom is in a mood. And I'm like, not tonight. Cause he was trying to complain that I'm like, turn the video games off. We're going to sleep, you know? And instead of, and I could like fight with him, I could like give up, but I was just like, I explained it to him. Like not tonight. I am having a bad night and you are not messing with me this evening. And he like kind of got it. He's like, all right. But I think that there's like a balance too. We don't want to tell our kids too much. We want to keep their, their childhood sacred and not like dealing with a lot of like personal, emotional drama drama today. This girl called me ugly and I'm like, no, I'm not going to, I'm going to spare my kid with like the little, (laughs) the little drama. Yeah. My, my daughter's, she's gotten to a point where she's been hurt by a lot of her friends and stuff like that. She's Mm -hmm. like, Oh dad, so-and-so said this about me or these girls don't want to hang and play with me and all this stuff. But now she's just like, yeah, it's all good. She does her art and all that stuff. And I, she asks me questions. I try and answer it. Um, is, best as i can but at the end of the day these kids do need to fall over and scratch their face because that's life yeah you know you what can't I mean? protect them from everything right protect them from everything they're gonna fall off the rails our job is to be like hey baby sweetheart try yeah go mm-hmm. and she's gonna fall off again probably down the road i'm not gonna yeah. be there but that's just how it is oh, but you taught her enough yeah yeah that's that's great Oh, I love it so yeah. much. And, it, and it, it, again, it takes, takes, takes a village, like, especially with it Ooh. now that, you know, you're not with, you know, yeah. your mom anymore, mom is, yeah, you yeah. relinquish a little bit of the control, right. When you, your kid is not with you and they're with their other half, your other, yeah. your ex other half. Like, I don't mm-hmm. know exactly what he's doing and who's talking to him and who's teaching him lessons. Like it's scary right. sometimes. I'm like, I want to be in control of every single thing my kid learns, but I yeah. can't. So I have to be yeah. relinquish that control a bit. And it's, it's frustrating, but it's also like, it does take a village and they're learning and they're not going to repeat only my bad habits or be exactly a replica of mom. They're going to be their own individual person because they've gotten influenced by everyone in the village. Exactly. That. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And like, yeah, I mean, whatever 
the kid's mom does with them. I, and, I, and I know it's all good. You know, it's all the best intentions for us to be whatever great parents and stuff. That's why me and her, we try and be on the same page about everything and be like, hey, mama, I'm going to do this. Daddy, I'm going to, you know, this is what we're doing with putting them into volleyball, which they are. As long as we put all our bullshit aside, like our ego and shit like that, and just mm-hmm. be parents. Because at the end of the day, it's these two little people that we're trying to raise. So as long as we do that, everything is good. Like she the can main- call me all kinds of names she want, but I'm like, hey, we're taking the kids to volleyball, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh my God. It's the same with me and him too. It's like, oh, and then we're just like, oh, so what? I'm, I'm never speaking to you again. Like so angry with him. Like, so you'll pick a Buchanan at five. He's like, yeah, I got it. I'm like, okay, perfect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh Get my God. I love it. I want to know, um, we had such amazing conversation tonight. I feel like we could go on and on. I got to have you back on this podcast because you are so yeah. awesome. And you're so, <laughs> you're so, look at everyone's like, yes. He's like, it's so refreshing to hear a man, oh, you, guys are awesome, man. You, guys are awesome. you know, talking about this kind of stuff and being open. I really appreciate that because yeah. so often men are scared to talk about their feelings, but we're going to switch that up. Yeah. We're going to make mm-hmm. that a, not a thing anymore for the future generations, please. Yeah. Um, let's have a little bit of fun at the end here. Oh. And I want to ask you some funny questions just so we can get to know you a little more and, and on wild. a light note, just you know. <laughs> <laughs> you're wild. I'm wild. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, okay. Do you have your, are you ready? Here's uh, here's some rapid fires. Do right. you have your own Netflix account or do you use someone else's? I use someone else's. Ah! <laughs> Every person we've asked so far said, "Oh no, I have my own. I have my own." I had one. <laughs> I had one, but then I'm smart. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, what is your guilty pleasure? Damn. None. Your guilty pleasure is lying that you don't have a guilty pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> you must have one. Do you smoke vape cigarettes like I am right now? Like no. totally like a naughty girl. Ice cream. Ice cream. Okay, that's that's cute. Um, what is your go-to karaoke song? Damn. So many, huh? Oh my god. Yeah, there's there's a bunch. There's rap, there's um rock. Oh, there's there's too much. Don't uh, stop so believing. Like, don't I was gonna say that. Don't yeah. stop believing. That's a good one. Yeah, that is a good one. And then um uh Sugar Hill Gang. Oh, I don't know. This everybody this wants to rule the world. I don't know. I oh love my that song. god. I like to play it. Oh, you guys play that in Greenstone Project? Oh yeah, my god. We play I, it, yeah. I would that would die if I heard you guys play that song. Oh, okay. Man. Um, I'm sure there's that's a hard question to ask this man because he is a walking karaoke band. <laughs> so what is your um what was okay? What celebrity annoys you the most? Kirsten Dunst. <laughs> okay, Kirsten Dunst from like um from the the Bring It On movie that that one or, yeah or Jumanji yeah. Kirsten Dunst <laughs> maybe um Interview with a Vampire Is, am I showing my age yeah. <laughs> 68 Sharon, right here, ladies. 68 Let's ladies. <laughs> he looks great for 68. Um, what world record do you think you have a shot at beating? Um eating. Oh my god. Eating what? <laughs> Everyone pretty, says that. Um I think eating everything on the table. I'm pretty sure I'm black belt at that. I love eating. Even like the forks and knives and spoons. Oh, hey. <laughs> hey. okay. What um? What is your okay? Wait, this is the last one in this category. Then we'll go to a different one. Um, do you know how to perform a magic trick? No, <laughs> no. Okay. Well, no. Would you I should, I should. would you rather win the lottery or would you rather live twice as long? Win the lottery. Mm, that's what I would say too. If I um, if I live twice as long, everyone I love might be gone. Bye. that's a yeah that's so true would you um rather be a kid your whole life or an adult your whole life an adult because i can do some adult shit totally <laughs> totally would you rather be too hot or too cold too cold yeah I love- said the new zealand guy yeah 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 yeah, yeah it's yeah, cold yeah. up there it's mm-hmm. freezing. i love my blankets i mean i don't love blankets here 
But, yeah, but you yeah, like yeah. to snuggle up with some yeah, good like little blankets. Yeah. yeah, some blankets, uh, some body, whatever. For some reason, like when I thought of Aotearoa before I had been there and when I was like growing up and stuff, I just picked pictured it being like a tropical like environment but it's not a, maybe because the tattoos are similar to hawaii so i thought like right. we're similar but no it's like a freaking cold ass east it's coast mainland city frozen, freezing yeah it's a yeah. bright sunny day and it's just crispy cold yeah freezer it's all yeah. these polynesian people with their right english sounding accents it's like the craziest <laughs> thing i love it <laughs> um yeah, <laughs> yeah would it. you rather be batman or spider-man Wow. Batman? And why? Because he's hidden, I guess. And he's an introvert. I think I'm... Is he an introvert? I'm an yeah. introvert. Yeah, yeah, he is. And I think... He has a lot of gadgets, and I like gadgets. Yeah. And I like running around in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, okay. No, 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 that's so true. I feel like that you are definitely like Batman. You're the Batman of Kauai right now. Um, yeah, you know what? La- I, I, no, sorry, sorry. Okay. No, go so, ahead. What were you going to say? No, nah, because I do everything at night. Everyone's going to know this about me now. I do everything at night. I go to Safeway. I do my groceries midnight. Best time. Best time. No one's there. I go to Walmart and all this stuff. I do it at night. Yep. No, that's when we used to go school shopping for school at night. My dad put that in our heads when we were younger because <laughs> there's nobody. You're not fighting over erasers and shit. Exactly. Yeah. Just okay. Do. Last one. Would you rather listen to music from the 70s or music from today? 70s. Mm. Any favorite bands or favorite songs that you want to share? Not really. It doesn't have to be 70s. It can be any any type of music. What's your favorite like artist or maybe song or genre? that ma- makes you the happiest parliament parliament yeah um i like some funk oh yeah just stuff like i like funk yeah i like to dance i, I like to feel good and dance that's their band you guys they're so much fun right we should yeah. we should plan a Aloha that thyself w- retreat on Kauai so and hire cool, Greenstone Project to come and play and freaking rock out and dance with them. There's so much fun. You guys yeah. would have a blast. Like, yeah, we, yeah. yeah you guys are a great band. It's, it's so much fun. And plus we're like, we're professional, but we're not, but we are. What it is, is we we just, we just have a good time. We yeah. just vibe off of everyone's energy, the people in the crowd, and we just have a blast. If I got to stand up and play the drums and yell at the lady and be like, jump on stage and grab these drumsticks and help me play the drums. Like it happens. Oh, people love that shit. Yeah. They'll eat it up. They love it. Eat it up. It's it's so much fun. It's it's super awesome. I I, I dream of being in a band like that. In fact, um, oh, come on down. We need a I know so like a little passion project on the side, like a country cover band, even like I love country too. Yep. Like that'd be so much fun to be a country singer for so a, cool. a party or something. That'd be fun. Oh my gosh. Okay. We could go on and on. I have like so many questions, but it's this is too much fun. Um, thank you so yes. much, Ariki. Oh, we don't so much. Oh, I know nah. it's like, no, it's never over. <laughs> we are definitely having you back. We have been so much fun. You guys can unmute yourself and say thank you so you know, much. I appreciate thank you. you guys. Thank you. Whatever to him and yeah 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 yeah. Oh, we have new people here. You have to you have to do a part two and maybe a part three. Yes, I'm down. And then a retreat. We all get together and 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 have a good time. Why your bus? (laughs) Why? Let's go. Let's go. Everyone, I'll be that girl up on the stage. I'll be like, why? Grabbing the drumsticks. (laughs) Yeah, I'll give you drumsticks. We can jam. (laughs) <laughs> thank you so fun. much we learned so much about you and i can't wait to hear that our new song together that we're gonna create and whatever the future holds it's gonna be cool to listen to this podcast like in a year and know right. and we're gonna have had done this song that we're we're just thinking about right now <laughs> like it's gonna have a name and it's gonna be out and it's gonna be it's gonna be cool chart so topper awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chart topper. <laughs> nah, right. thank you so much man i appreciate thank you so, i thank appreciate you, you guys you. Thank yeah. you. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everyone. Love you guys. Love you guys. Love you guys. Thank, Thank you guys. Bye. 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 Bye.